Hi, this is Andip Jali and Manos Brilakis presenting case 183 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating problems with access, both radial as well as femoral. The patient was a woman with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and diabetes who developed angina and had a coronary CT that showed a severe lesion in the distal right coronary artery with indeterminate lesions in the LAD and the circumflex. So she was sent for coronary angiography that did confirm severe disease in the distal and the mid-right coronary artery. There was also a significant lesion in the mid-LAD and some diffuse disease into the circumflex. So the plan was to start by treating the right coronary artery followed by the LAD. However, despite doing the radial diagnostic cath with uh, a six French catheter, we were unable to advance uh, a guide even using without a sheath. And uh, while we were trying to retrieve it, the radial guide catheter became entrapped. So we did many things. Uh, we did use warm blankets, we did give some vasodilators, and uh, uh, we did inflate the blood pressure cuff on the arm to call the ischemia-induced uh, vasodilatation, but it could not remove it. So we obtained right femoral arterial access. The person was obese and we had some difficulty, but we did get a good access point inferior to the inferior epigastric. So what do we do when there is a radial spasm and entrapment of a radial catheter? The first line is acute vasodilators, both locally as well as uh, systemically. The second is to give sedation, sometimes with propofol, sometimes even general anesthesia. Warm blankets to warm the arm. Sometimes we inject a lubricious solution, such as the rotaglide and the viperglide. There is also the concept of ischemia-induced uh, dilation by inflating a blood pressure cuff in the arm that has the, the entrapped catheter for five minutes that can cause ischemia in the arm. So when the blood pressure cuff is deflated, there is a vasodilation and that can help with getting the catheter unstuck. And finally, if everything else fails, then surgery may sometimes be needed. So in the meantime, we decided uh, to proceed with the PCI of the right through the femoral axis while we're doing all these maneuvers for the radial. So we tried an AL1, but the guy catheter kinked. We eventually had to use an Icari right one, which is a radial guide through the femoral, to be able to engage the right coronary artery and predilate it. In the meantime, we had anesthesia come. They were giving now propofol. But unfortunately, despite the propofol, the catheter is still stuck into the subclavian artery. So while they were working, we went back to the right coronary artery, but we were unable to deliver any stents. The Icari guide doesn't really give much support. So we used a microcatheter and switched the guide wire for a long wiggle wire and then switched the guide for an AL 0.75 guide. In the meantime, we also came some vasodilators. This is injecting nitro directly next to the artery along the course of the forearm. But again, we were unable to retrieve the entrapped catheter. And uh, after failure of the propofol, the patient actually uh, was intubated and placed under general anesthesia. So using the Amplatz guide and the guide extension, we were then able to deliver the stents and had a nice result into the right coronary artery. Unfortunately, at this point, we still have the issue with removing the catheter, but eventually, after we gave some uh, intra-arterial papaverin, we were able to retract it, but only partially. Then it became again entrapped. We couldn't get it um, all the way out of the body. So we did use uh, a, another catheter, advanced to femoral axis, and that's the catheter we're using to obtain the angiogram here. And also, uh, we gave some more papaverin. Um, and we can see here that uh, <clears throat> there is uh, some uh, spasm still and some poor flow into the radial artery. And this is how the catheter looks like. Again, we're able to retrieve most of it. But again, unfortunately, uh, the catheter is becoming unraveled towards uh, the end of trying to retrieve the catheter. 
And then unfortunately, the catheter did come out, but it also came with a piece of tissue that um, is uh, highly suggestive of the radial artery. So essentially, we do have a volsion of the radial artery. And we did the angiogram, we placed the tear band, and there didn't seem to be any extravasation over there. So after consultation with vascular surgery, we decided to just uh, observe the patient and continue with the case. Given all the access challenges, we decided to just finish the left system. So we wired uh, the lesion, and then the intent was to use a drug-coated balloon, given the small size of the vessel. But uh, after predilatation, we have this um, nice dissection. So clearly a stent is needed. So when it are placing a two to five a drug eluting stent, and that gave a nice result. At this point, we did have a lot of difficulty on the femoral too, and uh, we can see here also challenges and banking of the wire. So we couldn't get a perculose to follow through the arteriotomy. And we tried for quite some time, but we were unable again. So what we did is obtain access on the left common femoral, and then went up and over and used an end snare to snare the wire that was in the right femoral artery, the J-tip wire. After doing that, we were able to externalize the wire. So now we have very strong support with uh, an externalized wire. But even with that, we were unable to advance a per close through the arteriotomy. Again, discussions with vascular surgery. The patient was obese. There was tortuosity in the arteries, in the iliac and femorals. So eventually, we ended up deciding to do manual pressure. So we reversed and uh, we uh, did manual compression in the femoral axis side, so that was successful. However, at this point, the wrist started to swell, so the patient actually ended up undergoing surgery to ligate the right radial artery. So what are the lessons from this case? The first one is that uh, radial artery entrapment can happen when advancing catheters through small radial arteries. How to prevent this? By not using potentially small radial arteries, Although quite often, especially when we're using seathless catheters, like we did in our case, this can be avoided. Second, when there is uh, entrapment of a catheter due to radial spasm, there are many maneuvers that can be done. There are vasodilators, placement of heat, giving um, deep sedation or general anesthesia, or doing the ischemia-induced vasodilation by inflating a blood pressure cuff around the arm of the patient and letting the arm get ischemic that can help with dilation. Papaverin is not something we very commonly use in the cath lab, but it's increasingly being used both for coronary physiology, but also for treating refractory radial spasm. We had difficulties with engagement, so we ended up using a different guide catheter we used an Icari guide catheter, but then that was providing poor support. So we ended up using an AL guide catheter that was exchanged using a wiggle long wire. And finally, we had also issues in the femoral, couldn't deliver a perclose. And in the end, the solution to this problem was by using an externalization, snaring the wire so we're able to maintain access to the vessel, but eventually we ended up having to hold manual pressure for the femoral axis, and once we had the avulsion of the radial artery, then eventually the patient requires surgical ligation of the radial artery. Thank you.